good artists borrow, great artists steal, right? So this is a quote by Picasso or in my head being by Bensky. But in my opinion, stealing is such a bad word to describe inspiration. And I don't think that great artists steal. I think they do something else that I want to show you. For me, Dizzy Gillespie describes this in a better way. You can't steal a gift. Bird gave the world his music. And if you can hear it, you can have it. So for me, stealing art is more like a cartoon character going into a museum and stealing a painting and selling it to somebody else. In the beginning, as a visual artist, there was a thing that happened that I didn't like so much. When I was trying to be inspired by other artists, my illustration ended up looking too similar to the artist that I was getting inspiration from. It looked like I was copying that artist. And I want to show you how you can gather inspiration from other sources and put into your art and that will not seem like you are copying. That will look like your original creation. This technique is more or less what every professional artist do. So I will show you with two of my illustrations. Welcome to the drawing station zone. Actually, it's just two steps from where I was. So in this channel, I just don't tell you things. I show you. This is my illustration. And here's all the inspiration that I used. So this is what you do. You have your idea and you start gathering inspiration to make your idea come true. So in this case, I wanted to do a fake New Yorker cover. So I took inspiration from these old covers. This one is by Edna Eich from 1945. And this one is by Charles Adams, the creator of the Adams family. I love this idea of the ghosts in the cemetery, watching the movie in a drive-in. So I kind of had a similar idea. This is supposed to be a Halloween scene and the real ghosts inside the cemetery walls are scaring the children on the other side using broomsticks and sheets to make fake ghosts. So I thought that was a funny idea. So I wanted to give a kind of Victorian London vibe to this illustration. And I love 101 Dalmatians, the original animation. So I started gathering references from that animation. And you can see the similarities here in the tree and the fences, the use of light on the windows. So what I do is start gathering tiny pieces of a lot of illustrations and put into mine. And even when I gather these tiny pieces, when I put on my illustration, I still try to give my style. So I use as inspiration. I don't make an exact copy. Here on this illustration, you can see that I borrowed the colors. My ghosts are also green. But you should not stop there. A great practice is creating your own references. Like here, this ghost sitting on a tombstone. And here, me holding a broomstick. What I also did in this illustration was going to a street view. I wanted my cemetery to look like a London cemetery. So I went to Google Street View and searched for a London cemetery. And I started walking there. This actually took me a little bit longer than I expected because I was curious to see the whole cemetery and I spent like two hours walking inside the cemetery. So doing this gave me other ideas because Douglas Adams was buried in this cemetery. So I thought I will start putting names in my tombstone. So here I put Douglas Adams, here Virginia Woolf, Arthur Conan Doyle hidden here, Mary Shelley, I know all these authors were not buried in the same place, but I thought it was a fun idea to put them on my illustration. And here's another example. I have this illustration and here are my references. So I had this idea of taking the song Where Is My Mind by the Pixies and making a crossover with Dexter's Laboratory. So here you can see that I have my Dexter inspiration and my character looks like Dexter but it's not the same thing, right? And I'm not trying to hide from you that I'm being inspired by Dexter. I want to show to you that this is Dexter. So intention, it's a big thing in this case. Here I have references for all my beakers in the lab. And I have Black Francis from the Pixies here. I also like to use this shadow that is very harsh, very pointy to direct the viewer's attention to my focal point. 
and this is used a lot in old animations like this one so here's my inspiration and here too so you can see that it is a lot of work but that's the difference between copying and taking inspiration so you can see that this is not stealing you are taking inspiration and in the end if your creation looks too similar with what you are taking inspiration from I will suggest starting over and not calling that your original thing. I know a lot of artists do that. They create something that looks like a copy of other things and they say, this is mine. And more often than not, that artist get acclimated by people. But this is also different from you making an homage to some artists. We see a lot of directors taking the same shot from a movie that they like and they replicate that shot in their movie. So you see that intention is very important. When you copy someone and you say, this is not a copy, this is mine. That's the problem. So when you are making art, that's a gift for other artists. Other artists will look at your art, you will be inspired by it. So let's not use stealing anymore. I don't think it's appropriate word. I think that bad artists steal and great artists get inspired.